on March 2nd, 1962, was the most mythological game in NBA history. Did it happen? Did it not? Who knows? What is the story behind it? And that's what we're going to get to today, talking about Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game, today on Daily Sports History. Welcome to Daily Sports History. I'm Ethan Rees, your guide to a rapid deep dive into sports history every day. To most of us, Will Chamberlain is this mythological figure, someone we didn't even see play. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of highlights of him as well. He retired in 1973 as TV was becoming more of a boom in the basketball world, and most of us weren't even alive yet. So to have seen him play was rare. And to see his 100-point game was even more rare. So first, let's go over Wilt Chamberlain. Now, I could do a whole episode, and I probably will do a whole episode, just about who he was and all the things he did in his career. Because there's a lot, and I'm not going to go through every little thing. I'm just going to go through some big, heavy points. Some big points because I kind of got to understand, how did Wilt get to this point? In track and field at the size of 6'11". He still grew a few more inches to be his reported 7'1 height when he played in the NBA. But at that time, his high jump was 6 feet 6 inches. He ran the 440-yard dash with 49 seconds. And he shot put 53 feet and long jump 22 feet. He was just an athletic marvel at his size. There's no real comparison. The closest comparison we can get to being as athletic as he was today would be LeBron James. And he was about five inches taller than LeBron. So he, not only was he big and physically fit, he was just dominant. It's reported that he could bench press over 500 pounds 10 times. So the main thing was that he was an athletic freak. And in high school, he averaged over 37 points a game, setting the Philadelphia high school scoring record. So that grew the attention and led him to Kansas University. He debuted with a bang, setting a record for a college player's first game with 52 points and 31 rebounds. He entered college dominating. But he didn't start his professional career in the NBA. No, he went to the Harlem Globetrotters because he left college early as he had to wait four years to enter the NBA. So he played a year with the Harlem Globetrotters and actually took a pay cut to join the NBA, but he was able to join his hometown team in Philadelphia with the Philadelphia Warriors. And he took the NBA world by storm, leading the league in rebounds and points his first two seasons and continued that trend for multiple years. But in 1961 was when he really took off, averaging over 50 points a game, a record that still holds to this day. And this year, before his 100-point game, he had already set the record for the most points in the game at 78. But what made this game different, what made it his, having the chance on March 2nd, 1961, to score 100 points? Well, it required a lot of things to happen. One, the New York Knicks were a terrible team at the time. They were in last place and didn't have a whole lot of quality players. And then their starting center, Phil Jordan, had the flu. Although many of his teammates think that uh, he actually was just hung over and couldn't play. That put Daryl Imhoff in to start. Now, he was young and it would eventually make one All-Star game. So he was a quality NBA player, but he was still young trying to learn the position. And he would eventually foul out after only 20 minutes. So they had to turn to their third string center, Cleveland Bunker, a 6'9 rookie from Jackson State, who was a sixth round pick that year who just was undersized and could not handle Wilt Chamberlain. This made easy work for Wilt to score at will. And when he started to rack up points, that's when his team realized, well, he has a shot to go for 100, as they had already known him to go for 70 multiple times. So the team got together and decided they were going to start fouling more and more to stop the clock to actually go for 100 points. These fouls actually made it possible for him to get to that. Because with the clock stopping and them getting the ball back over and over, it allowed more and more chances for him to score. 
but that didn't stop the other team from fouling him. This actually was helpful in this game as it wasn't in other games. Normally, his free throw percentage was about 51%, so he was a terrible free throw shooter. But this one game, he shot 28 32. Maybe it was just his focus, or he just got lucky. But this was the main factor in him scoring 100 points. If he would have shot his average, he would have been somewhere in the 80s. Still would have been the record all time, but wouldn't have been that 100 number that's so clean and crisp that made it mythological. And that night from the field, he shot 36 for 63, shooting over 50% from the field. You add that up, and you get the 100. Now, what makes this game so mythological? That we often just pass over it, and don't even think about it sometimes. We just mentioned it in passing. Well, it's mainly because it wasn't televised. At this time, television was still new in the sports world, but it was also because they were playing it on a neutral site in Hershey, Pennsylvania. They didn't have their regular crew there, and the radio broadcast wasn't recorded as normal. There's a few snippets I've gotten recorded that people have been able to find throughout the years, but it wasn't like they were all prepared for this. You didn't know this was going to happen, and it was just a one-off, and normally, we wouldn't have cared, except for a legendary thing happened that very night. Another thing that makes it mythological is there's only about 4,000 people in attendance meaning there was just almost no one there to talk about it. He had the journalist in that famous photo with the paper that said 100. Maybe that's all we need. My question is, do we think Wilt would have been successful in today's basketball world? I like to think he would have, as he was very athletic, but I don't think he would have had a chance at hitting 100 in today's game. Thank you for listening to today's Daily Sports History. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, please follow and subscribe wherever you're listening. We'd love to see that our, our community is growing, and it makes me very excited and proud that you guys are enjoying this as well. And come back tomorrow for more Daily Sports History.